And we continue our newsmaker hour now with uh, Steuben County District Attorney Brooks Baker. Brooks Baker, thank you for calling in. Brian, great to be here. Good morning. Uh, I wanted to start out with uh, crime and the courts in the COVID-19 period. First off, to start out with something with that, that uh, Steuben County Sheriff Jim Allard said last week on our show. He said that uh, some of the drug dealers are taking advantage of the uh, situation, the COVID-19 situation. What are you seeing there? Well, I think he's very, very correct, Brian. Uh, we're seeing uh, more drug dealers with larger quantities of drugs and um, and selling um, to more people. I mean, the reality is, you know, folks are home, they're cooped up. Um, everybody who's supposed to be not working is not working, but drug dealers still are. And the other piece of the puzzle is that the stimulus checks have come out, so people have ready cash. It's sort of like tax season twice in a row. We have tax refunds and, and uh, stimulus checks out there, and drug dealers are seeing a real opportunity right now, unfortunately. Um, as far as the court goes, how is that going, the courtroom situation? Uh, is everything on Zoom? Tell us about that. Um, we, we don't, uh, we're doing no in-person court right now. Uh, all the court world stuff is actually being done over Skype or by telephone right now. Uh, we are, existing cases are not moving forward, really. We're doing some motion arguments, but we can't do things like hearings or trials, obviously, or even pleas. Um, the courts are, are shut down themselves, so we are doing emergency things when we have to. Uh, things like arraignments, um, those are being done by Skype. I'll be in my home office. The judge will be in his home office. So the defense attorney, the uh, judge talks to the defendant over Skype. Uh, the Sheriff Allard has a Skype program set up in his in his jail, and we do the whole process with all the parties present, uh, but just over, over a Skype uh, interface. It's a very different process. Uh, it's one, actually, that's, that's pretty productive because it saves all the travel time and, and the risk of transporting inmates around. But it is a little bit uh, tough for us to get used to. Yeah, that was my next question. What's it like doing any kind of legal work on Skype? What do you notice that's different about that uh, in versus doing it in person? You know, besides what you just said about the uh, the uh, saving uh, gas and mileage on the cars and all that. What what's are there any different techniques legally, or do you notice any big difference uh, when you're doing it on Skype or Zoom or phone or something like that? Well, uh, making a record is a little bit more difficult because uh, it's, it's hard to see who's talking when. Because oftentimes, you know, we'll, as part of the process, there'll be a probation officer there. We have a court reporter trying to take things down, uh, but we can't see anybody. So that's sort of knowing who's doing what, when, and where is a little bit more difficult. Um, the defendant's not sitting next to his, his attorney, so uh, he or she doesn't know when to speak up. So sometimes they're sort of talking over people, getting it organized is a little bit more difficult. And there are limitations on what we can do. We can't do live fire courtroom stuff, um, things like hearings. We can't show people exhibits. You can't show somebody a photograph and have them identify it because you know, I'm, I'm in an office in Corning and, and they're in the Bath Jail, so we can't make that happen. Um, those kinds of things are, are in theory, it's, an, it's a good idea, but as far as doing more involved legal work, it's almost impossible. And there's always technology. I mean, it's it's a good idea, but it doesn't always work. So there are times when people can't be seen or heard or the link doesn't work for somebody. It actually slows the court process down a fair amount right now. This is very interesting. Talking with Steuben County District Attorney Brooks Baker. Brooks Baker, bail reform, parole violation. Now, th did the governor put out some executive order or make a statement about parole violations in this COVID period? There, there were statements that they would not be holding parole violators, and then it, it, it's also trickled down through a policy to, to New York State parole that uh, only in the very worst cases are they actually allowing us to hold a parole violator. Uh, you know, that tied in with this influx of drug stuff uh, and bail reform has put a lot of these folks back on the street. We've had a number of uh, parolees uh, out dealing drugs. Now, those are not qualifying offenses. Traditionally, those folks would be held on a parole detainer. Um, however, right now, parole's not issuing detainers, so people are out. It, it is part of what's been such a boon to drug dealers is uh, they know they can't be held, so they'll go out and they'll sell their drugs. We make the arrest, we take them into jail, and um, 
with bail reform, these are not qualifying offenses, which means we can't set bail on, on drug offenses. They're automatically released in most cases. Uh, and even if they're a, uh, a parolee, somebody who's even a violent criminal who's in, in uh, on a state prison sentence who's been out and, and they're waiting for parole, uh, they aren't released. Uh, they are automatically released because parole is not in a position to issue a detainer. So um, it's really, really difficult on law enforcement. It makes it very hard for us. Uh, we're seeing we see a number of parole detainees or parolees come in from other areas like Buffalo or Rochester, uh, selling large quantities of drugs. These are bad folks doing bad things. Uh, our folks manage to find them, make the arrest, uh, put them into Stephen County Jail, expecting that parole will do what it has always done and hold them. So they won't run, um, and they're released. Uh, and often, several times, we've, we've caught them again within the, within the week dealing drugs again because they just don't care. Uh, the teeth are gone with no parole violations and, and uh, with bail reform. If the, dr- the drug dealing offense is really a lot bigger than the usual, uh, whatever that would be, uh, do you, are you able to hold them? Uh, longer or make the bail higher? Is there any um, difference with the new bail reform in terms of how long you can hold a drug b- dealer for or what kind of bail can be set, or is there no bail at all, period? Uh, there, well, you know, Brian, that's, you know, right now we are seeing drug dealers with, with more money and more quantity than we're used to seeing. Uh, and I think it's because we are, um, you know, because of all the stimulus check money floating around, uh, and because you know they're the only ones working, and they can they can move a lot of product to different board, and they're buying more. So we are seeing higher level drug offenses at the you know, a felony level, which is the most significant we have. Uh, and in most cases, we still cannot set bail. So somebody could be running around with a, a pound of methamphetamine or ounces of cocaine. Uh, Suburban County Sheriff's Office and the Hornell PD and. Um, uh, the Bath PD and Hoyne PD have been working together, and we're still making those arrests through the drug initiative, and unfortunately they're getting out. Uh, a, felonies don't even qualify for bail anymore, except in very, 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 very rare circumstances. So it's it's incredibly frustrating for law enforcement. To, you know, they, they find somebody who is moving a lot of drugs into our community, making our community very unsafe, uh, and um, they take them off the street only to have the governor's policy to bail reform and parole detainers, put them right back on the street again for us to arrest a week or two later. It really has become catch from this law enforcement. It doesn't mean we can't arrest them down the road and we can't charge them and we, I mean, and we can't prosecute them, which we will do. But right now I can't even hold a grand jury because of the court process. Does it make it more obvious who the drug dealers are? Are the drug dealers, I guess I'd say, covers blown with a lack of employment, uh, is there, how, how does that work? Uh, is it, is it more obvious that someone is a drug dealer, uh, or do you kind of pretty much know who they are and it's just a matter of catching them in the act? How does that work? Well, sort of, it's a combination of both. I mean, there are, you know, less people are moving around right now. Um, that's just, uh, most of us are staying home, uh, if we have to, or if, if we can't. And, uh, you know, through our employers, we're not going out. So seeing somebody cruising the neighborhoods, like in the city of Hornell, or cars from outside the area uh, that are are strangers in our area are making it more obvious who is dealing drugs. There's no question about that. Um, As far as catching them in the act and those kinds of things, that's a little bit more difficult for law enforcement at this time because some of our investigative methodologies uh, involving undercover officers and things like that are, are being curtailed because of concerns about COVID. What about uh, DWIs? Is that going up or down with the COVID nineteen situation? Well, I, my my read is it's going down a little bit just because less people are out driving. I mean, bars are closed, um, people aren't having parties at home, that kind of thing. So I think overall our numbers are down just because less people are on the roads and traveling. I mean, we're seeing car insurance companies give rebates because people aren't driving, uh, and I think that's a reality. And a lot of our DWIs come out of uh, people who you know, make the mistake of having one too many at a bar or after dinner or something like that, and people aren't doing those social things. So uh, as social distancing has, has occurred and, and socializing has been reduced, uh, the number of drunk drivers has gone down. But we are still seeing those cases. I mean, people are still drinking and driving, unfortunately. Uh, and um, But law enforcement is out there on the road, so I think there's a case where it's more obvious if someone is drinking and driving. Uh, if somebody's out in a vehicle and law enforcement is still out there in force, and um, 
I think they're more apt to be picked up and noticed because they're the only car on the road and they're weaving and swerving a little bit or they're running a red light or they're rolling through a stop sign or they're doing the things a drunk driver does wrong. So I think with um, it's probably a worse time to drink and drive because law enforcement is out there uh, with less cars to look at and they get more scrutiny when they're on the highway. But I think there's also a little bit less of it going on just because the outlets for creating a drunk driver, the social outlets aren't there right now. For the student age people who have addiction problems, are you seeing uh, more or less of the underage drinking? And what about uh, drug use among the teens? How What's that like in this COVID period? Well, it, it's hard to tell. Um, you know, again, with our um, some of the limitations in enforcement, we're not seeing um, some of these things. But I think that the reality is we're not seeing, and luckily people are being smart. I think parents are more home with their children now than they traditionally have been uh, because they're not working. So uh, I think there's a little bit more supervision than, than there always has been. We're not seeing um, huge numbers of you know, kind of field parties or, or kids' social events um, being broken up by law enforcement, which I think is a great thing. Although we are still, um, we're getting reports. I know the Sheriff's Department has done a good job tracking down a couple of reports of, of people getting together uh, in, in rural areas in the woods sort of for field party stuff for kids. So it's still going on, um, as is drug use. Uh, my concern is the drug use may be going up because there's more availability for drugs on the street. Um, luckily, you know, one population that did not get stimulus money uh, is is those kids who are home, high school kids um, of that age group. So they don't have more ready cash, and a lot of them don't have their, um, you know, their part-time jobs in a lot of places that allow them to have some income to do some of these things. And there's no real reason for them to be out of the house. So... Uh, I think there's there's certainly more opportunity because kids are in school, but I think there's also more supervision. So we're sort of seeing no real uh, huge increase in that stuff right now, um, which is a good thing. We're speaking with Sioux Bend County District Attorney Brooks Baker. Going to take a quick break. We'll check the forecast with Rob. We'll be right back. The Ryan Agencies, your local, independent insurance agencies. Online insurance companies don't know the unique needs of our rural community. The Ryan Agency meets rural needs every day. Local insurance experts offering realistic solutions. Contact the Ryan Agencies today. Good local people offering realistic insurance solutions. Insurance protection you can rely on. Hungry for something different? Go to this website, GetLocalTakeout.com, for a list of restaurants still offering takeout in our area. GetLocalTakeout.com is brought to you in support of local restaurants by the Ryan Agencies and MysticMedia.com. Checking in now with meteorologist Rob Carolyn. Uh, Rob, what do we got in store for today? Well, Brian, we've got more cool temperatures. The good news is not quite as uh, snowy as it was over the weekend. Uh, that's the upside to the forecast. We'll be looking at lots of cloudiness today, and there'll be some showers crossing the area associated with low pressure passing south of the region. It'll be breezy. Temperatures are going to be 45 to 50. Tonight, the showers end. Gradual clearing overnight, breezy and cold. A hard freeze likely. Temperatures down to about 25. Tomorrow, we're partly sunny breezy. We may see a sprinkle or a shower tomorrow afternoon. High is going to be 45 to 50. Tomorrow night, sky is going to have tents. to be partly cloudy. Lows will drop down to about 25 to 30. And we're mostly sunny, 50 to 55 on Wednesday. We continue warming up Thursday and Friday. Brian, sunrise this morning was at 551. Sunset tonight at 822. Back with Stuben County District Attorney Brooks Baker talking about uh, crime and courts in uh, the COVID-19 period. Um, District Attorney Baker, um, domestic violence. Uh, what are we seeing there? Well, that's you know that's one of the kind of byproducts of, of people being cooped up at home together um, without a whole lot to do and, and low on entertainment. The longer this goes, uh, the more people get frustrated. The more pressures kick in that traditionally drive domestic violence. You know, people are drinking more. Um, people are are not working. They are home. They are bored. They're worried about finances because money's not coming in. So all of those sort of stressors that create domestic violence are happening now probably in a, in a magnified fashion. So um, we are seeing more domestic violence calls. Uh, some of those those are up. And um, yeah, that's, it's been happening statewide. The governor has, has created some special um, reporting methodologies for that. 
and um, obviously our, our folks are um, very, very aware of it. Uh, CPS, Child Protective Services, is still working. Our investigators are still working. Uh, law enforcement is still responding to domestic violence calls. I think those are going up. And luckily, we haven't seen any any really terrible things here in Stuben County, uh, but I know there have been some things statewide. Obviously, you know, if anything happens, 911 needs to be called. Uh, if you hear something bad at your neighbor's house in the apartment upstairs, uh, report it. Uh, this is a situation where, you know, some of these things that might have been discovered when a child goes to school or when a spouse goes to work and somebody sees a bruise or, or they have somebody to talk to, there's no outlet now. Um, so it, it's, it's crucial that you know, help your neighbors out. If you see something, say something. That's um, not only in the drug world, we've always said that, but also in the context of domestic violence because those calls are up and the stressors that, that, that tend to lead to uh, domestic violence are increasing in every household across the county uh, because of economics, because of boredom, because of frustration, because of lack of social outlets, all of those things. You think is someone uh, being cooped up inside, uh, when they get outside, are they getting more speeding tickets? Well, I, I think people are still pretty cooped up, so uh, and, and there isn't a good reason to be driving right now. So right. I, don't, I don't think we're seeing, maybe on a per capita basis, I mean, you know, a number of tickets per driver, those may be going up. Um, but we aren't seeing the, the an influx of tickets. But if you've, um, you know, I have to go to work a couple of times a week to bath. And, you know, the number of cars I see on Route 86 is not what I'm used to seeing. The traffic is way, way down. Um, if you go downtown to pick up a pizza or something like that, if you're getting takeout food, you'll notice that most of our downtowns aren't really occupied either. So uh, we just are, it's hard to tell by numbers now. Um, just because there are so many less people driving, so much less that, that those numbers are pretty well down, too. Okay. District Attorney Brooks Baker, COVID-19 violations at businesses, businesses that are supposed to be closed, uh, considered unessential, but are open anyway. How much of that are you seeing? Not very much. Uh, we have, you know, the people here in Stubbin County have hunkered down and, and really done the, uh, a, a yeoman's life job to try to keep themselves and their neighbors safe. I really have to, to say that's been a, a, we've come together as a community, um, unlike some other communities. Now, there have been reports. Um, there's a hotline set up, and um, people can call 911 if they're concerned about violations. You know, there is a, a, a legal process set up for, for businesses to violate. I think we saw over in Shimon County, they closed down the Lowe's and, and took some other actions because people weren't doing the right thing living numbers. Um, so far, we've certainly gotten complaints about businesses, large and small, not really so much being open, but, but the essential businesses, um, not limiting the number of people who, who were there or some of the, the essential businesses sort of expanding their business beyond what they should be doing under the current guidelines. Uh, so far, those have all been resolved by a phone call from the sheriff's office or, or a deputy stopping by to say, Hey, you know, you shouldn't do this. I need to make some changes. So, uh, people have been uh, people are getting frustrated. There's no question. I mean, that's businesses are not making the money they need to make to stay afloat and uh, keep their employees employed. And people are frustrated by that. People want to be out, and be social, uh, but so far, and, and there's people are kind of testing those waters a little bit. Uh, but so far, we've been able to resolve all of those cases in Sioux County um, by you know warning and conversation and just sort of a a reiteration of why we're doing this and, and what the risks are and, and the behaviors being engaged in. So, um, you know, knock on wood here, we've not had to actually attempt a prosecution for any of those violations, and I, I sincerely hope we don't have to. So we're seeing uh, domestic violence and drug dealing uh, increase, at least the, the amount and the quantity of drugs uh, being sold is up. Um, underage drinking and uh, youth drug use uh, does not seem to be up, but just the opposite. Not too many COVID violations as far as the uh, businesses go, and uh, not a lot of speeding infractions. Uh, down to the last couple of minutes, uh, any final thoughts, or, and in particular, anything else that you've noticed that's a little bit different about this COVID-19 period that maybe you did not see uh, during, uh, what do we call it, ordinary times? Well, you know, we, we are seeing some kind of rash, um, criminal mischief kind of things, people kind of blowing up uh, and blowing off steam. And that's something that we don't usually see. Um, it's a little bit unique. I mean, people are frustrated, they're home, they're, um, they don't have an outlet, and it's been really hard on those folks uh, who have mental health issues. 
uh, that's been something that, that um, we've had to deal with probably a little bit more than we're used to dealing with. You know, normally, there are a lot of folks who have things to deal with, but um, they're treatment outlets and they're working and then doing other things. There have been some sort of uh, issues with folks with mental health because they can't get their treatment. They're out of their normal regimes, that kind of thing. That's something we didn't really expect to see. Steuben County District Attorney Brooks Baker, um, out of time. This has been a very interesting interview. Wanna thank you for coming on. Well, thanks for having me, Brian. Take care and be safe and be well.